Hey guys, in this video I was going to go through some recent work I've done to the car um, as a result of breaking down about a week or so ago uh, and spending three hours at the side of the road. Um, so effectively it was an, an ignition related issue, um, it just cut out dead, started a couple of times, went a few hundred yards and it just cut out dead and then wouldn't start at all. Um, so I sort of lifted the bonnet um, and I discovered uh, that the main um, positive cable to the ignition coil was red hot to the point it was almost smoking. Um, so I disconnected the battery um, and was trying to sort of find out what it was and um, if, if there was a short somewhere in the loom. But, um, yeah, I didn't have a lot of tools on me and stuff like that, so it wasn't something I could really deal with that well at the side of the road. So I called for recovery and was waiting for them. Uh, and as by chance, uh, a friend of mine sort of stopped. Uh, he knows his cars, works in the trade. Um, and he disconnected the rev counter feed off the miners terminal of the coil and the car started straight up. So it was bizarre, something I wouldn't have thought of. I was just assuming there was a short or something in the positive supply to the coil. So anyway, I managed to drive myself home. The car started fine, I took it out again that day, no problems. Uh, but it obviously got me thinking uh, and wanting to find out what the issue was. Um, now looking at the wiring loom that was all in the back here and along the engine bay, everything was wound up or, or, or tied up with black masking tape. It was just everything bound together. So I spent a good couple of hours literally separating all the cables, getting all the, the, the tape off the loom so I could see if there was any evidence of sort of burnt cables or shorting or anything like that. I did find one cable that the sheathing had burnt slightly, uh, but the, other than that, everything looked okay. Um, so good old Google and good old YouTube, um, I started doing a bit of research um, so the car currently has uh, the Petronics Igniter 1 uh, ignition module uh, and it had a standard ignition coil. Uh, now what fed that ignition coil was the original resistor cable. So it comes off the ignition but it steps a voltage down. I think when you measure it when, when the car's not running, ignition on but engine not running, you get about 7 volts at the coil. When the engine's running, it's up to about 10 volts. Now, as I said, I did a bit of research on YouTube and uh, Google, and there seems to be quite a lot of uh, contradiction and, and disagreement over how you should wire the Petronics ignition module. Uh, a lot of people say keep the existing ballast um, connector or resistor wire, and a lot of others say wire it to a 12 volt supply. Um, so for the fact that my resistor cable had got so hot, um, I kind of don't trust that cable now. Although it's worked okay for a couple of days, I still think, mm, is there still a problem somewhere in the loom that I haven't found? Um, so what I've done is I've actually put in the um, flamethrower coil that goes with the Petronics Igniter module. Uh, it's a 1.5 ohm coil. Um, and that clearly says on there not to, it can be used with a resistor or a ballast, uh, load ballast, but um, it's recommended that you don't. So what I've done is I've literally cut the resistor wire out, uh, back out the loom. I've wired in a new ignition switched source, so it's a straight 12 volts. And I've obviously put an inline fuse in that supply up under the dash. So now I've got the flamethrower coil my Petronics igniter module wired up to a dedicated 12 volts. Um, there's also an additional 12 volt supply that goes to the positive side of the coil. On this car, it's a yellow cable, and that's from your starter motor solenoid, so it gives it a full 12 volts or whatever while you're cranking. And um, so I've retained that. Um, so yeah, generally, um, I took it out today, and it. It, it drives really nicely. So I've gone the route of, because I say I don't trust the resistor cable, I'm thinking what's, is there any other damage? But yeah, I'm, I'm, I've gone the 12 volt supply. Um, even Petronics themselves, I mean, I look at the instruction um, 
manual that I've got for my igniter, it's still in the, the history file of the car, and it just, it's quite vague, it says, if you've got a resistor wire or ballast, retain it, and then further in the literature, it says, you may or may not retain the resistor or ballast. But then if you look at a later instructions for the same Petronics Igniter 1, it says remove the ballast resistor. So it's very confusing. So there's a lot of people out there um, speaking to on forums who've retained the resistor wire without problems. Others have said they've had problems and those problems have gone away when they've converted it to a 12 volt supply. So say, as I'd had issues with the cable, I've, um, yeah, I've decided to, to, to go to 12 volt. The other thing I have done, because I don't know if there was an issue with the rev counter or the tack, which caused some kind of resistance and caused the resistor cable to get hot. Um, what I did notice is when I took all the loom apart, the actual cable that runs through the firewall to the tack from the negative supply of the coil, it was bound up so much behind the brake booster. So whether or not that was just building up resistance or something, I don't know. So what I've done is I've shortened the cable um, and I've put a little one amp fuse behind the dash um, and what I've also done temporarily for now, just to sort of eliminate whether it is a tack issue or not, um, is I've actually wired that tack feed through a switch under my dash temporarily. So if I'm out there driving and the car dies again, uh, to, to eliminate the, 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 the fact that it may be the tack, I can just flick a switch, disables the tack. If the car starts straight back up again, then I know it's definitely an issue with my tack. Um, so that's just hopefully a temporary measure, but I'll see. I'll see how it runs now. Um, but while I've been under here, I've literally un undone all the wood loom. Um, I've traced some old wiring harnesses. It was old TCS system on the car. The wiring remained for that. Any old redundant um, harnesses or wire connection, whatever, I've, I've taken the opportunity to cut them out of the loom. And what I've done, and I know it's not original, I've literally put all the loom neatly in some conduits so I've split the loom out one big loom I've split it into four or five different looms in different runs of conduit so I can actually get to stuff a bit easier if I have problems in the future and I think it just looks nice and neat and it it's got to protect the cable better than just bounding it full of masking tape I kid you not I have meters and meters of the stuff once I undone all the loom I've also redone there's a loom that runs just across the top of the um or just behind the valve cover here on the driver's side so I've literally again taken all those wires out checked them there's a couple of old switches and cables that are redundant so I've cut them out um, so generally just gone through all of it in the hope that if they say it was an issue with the um, resistor wire by switching to a different supply now hopefully that's cured it if not it's probably going to be the tack and I'll find that out um, so yeah, that's what's happened to me in the last week or so and what I've done to the car. Um, that's the thing I suppose with these old cars and wiring, it's, um, yeah, hey, there's always gonna be little gremlins, but I've had the car nearly six months. I've done probably 1200, 1250 miles in it. And that's the first time it let me down. Um, but I know that trick with the um, tack cable now. Uh, I would never have thought that. I just thought there was a, a load of resistance there in the coil and the coil would burn out. I would have changed the coil. So yeah, that's a good tip for, for me in the future um, to, to disconnect the tack if I have an ignition failure. What I've also done um, is I've, not that I'll probably use it at this point, I've also just bought myself uh, a rebuilt HEI distributor um, for the Pontiac. So I'm just gonna keep that in the garage. Um, if I do have any other problems with uh, the distributor or ignition longer term, I won't spend any more money on it. I'll just switch over to the HEI. I had that in my um, last Trans Am. And other than, I think in 10 years, I had to change the ignition module twice on it and that was it. Um, so they are pretty reliable, pretty simple to, to wire in. So I'm just gonna keep that stored away um, just in the event that I may, I may need it in the future. Um, so yeah, um, obviously while I've been doing this work, I've discovered a couple of other little things that need to be done on the car, which I'll share with you. Um, in some other videos um, in, in the future, but um, yeah, just things like I found a, a vacuum leak on the intake manifold, um, so that's got to be done. Um, it does have a very annoying tiny little flat spot just off idle, which I've been chasing for a little while. Uh, and I've done, I've done plugs, I've done fuel filters, I've checked um, 
accelerator pumps in the car, check the operation of the choke. Uh, and so while I've been doing this work with the cabling, uh, I've noticed while it was out, I thought I'll, I'll throw some carb cleaner down there, see if it um, picks up a vacuum leak, and sure enough it does on the driver's side. Only little area of probably two or three inches, but clearly it's enough to be um, sucking in the air and um, yeah, giving it a little flat spot. So I've got that job to get done. Uh, and I've also I've ordered up um, some new uh, axle oil seals for the back because on the driver's side again we've got a slight weep on the axle oil seal. Um, I'm keep I've been I've known about it for a few weeks and I, I just every week just pull the drum off just to see the, the the brake drum just to see if it's severe or not. It's, it's just weeping slightly. Um, so but. I know it's it's failing, so I want to get it done. So I've got new wheel bearings and axle oil seals to do on the back. Um, but yeah, I'll share that with you um, probably in a future video. Those jobs um, I probably won't do myself. Um, I'll probably put that into the garage locally here, um, especially doing getting up underneath trying to do axles and diffs. Um, it's a lot easier on a ramp um, and doing an intake manifold. Um, yeah, I know how to do it in theory, but whether or not I'm brave enough to do it, probably not. So I'll get him to do that as well. So I've just ordered the parts for that from the States because um, I think cause it's a Ram Air, a Ram Air head. So I know they're, they're specific only to a couple of years, the gaskets, I think. According to Firebird Central site, they are. So I've ordered up the right ones for this year. Um, so yeah, I'll get that done in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, what I've done with my ignition, it's not the right way or the wrong way. I'm not telling you that, that that's the way to do it with the 12 volts. It's just the way I've decided to go based on what I've read and seen um, and what's right for me and my car. So, um, But if, if the video's helped any of you with things like the disconnecting the tack and um, wiring up your Petronics, then hopefully it has. But if not, still hope you enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.